It begins with an unsettling situation. A boy lies in bed, crying. A man near him tells him to be quiet. When he hears a noise coming from another room, he takes the boy there with him. We see the environment is quite disturbing. Like the man has kidnapped several boys in his house. In the other room, a younger boy sits on his bed, ripping pages out of a Bible. Then the boy turns his head to show a distorted face. The lights instantly go out, and he sits on a drawer once they return. He starts talking like a demon. This makes the man point a gun at him. However, he soon drops it because the possessed child makes him. Outside the room, we observe a light shining on and off. A horrific yell follows. The scene changes drastically to a college campus. Two girls sit inside a classroom where a lecture about sleep disorders takes place. One of them is Alice, who discovers that her friend, Carla, did not sleep again last night. She tells her that is not good. The instructor talks about a certain disorder, fatal familial insomnia, or FFI. It prevents one from sleeping until they lose their life. After that, he mentions a certain man who went without sleep for 30 days. His wife and child were found murdered. The instructor says that some people believe he was possessed, but he believes in a scientific explanation. Later, Carla talks to two doctors about her brother. They tell her he is losing energy because he can't sleep. We discover that her parents lost their lives. Her brother has FFI. The doctors tell her they cannot do anything for him anymore, so they think it would be best for him to be at home in his final stages. Then Carla comes to her brother, Blake, who happens to be right there. He guesses correctly that he is being taken out. It gives him instant sorrow. He tries to make the heavy situation lighter, but he knows it is getting worse for him. Shortly after, a doctor named Pat comes to them. As soon as he does, Carla leaves for some reason. She watches Blake enjoy himself with Pat. Even in such a troublesome time, he finds a way to forget about the bad things. The next scene has Carla talking to her instructor, Robert, about what to do with Blake. He reveals to her that there is a special facility there on campus. In there, they have access to drugs that they can't get elsewhere. He has two patients there now, who he is treating. It's uncertain how Carla feels about hearing this. But Robert tells her Blake won't last one more week without proper care. In her room, Carla seems to think about what she should do. Is it a good idea to use the facility advice to her? She takes a book about FFI and looks through it. Inside lies an article that states her parents took part in a murder-suicide. Then Alice enters her room to instantly hug her. She does that because she heard what happened. She also tells Carla that Robert is right about what he wants to do. There is no other way. At night, they go to see Blake. While Alice goes to print his chart, Carla hears some talking coming from Blake's area. So she goes there, but only finds him alone. Blake becomes confused when she asks who he was talking. As the three of them get ready to leave, Carla thoughtfully looks at a crucifix in Blake's box for some second. Then Pat arrives, which makes them all share an awkward moment of silence. It seems especially weird for Carla. Afterward, all four of them come to Robert. Upon seeing Pat, he seems somewhat taken aback. To his stare, Pat says they will need a pharmacologist that can be trusted. So they enter the building. At the sub-basement level, they enter a room that shows them another room behind a large glass. Two people are there, Angela and Chris. Both of them have serious sleep disorders. So the group enters their room. Blake gets placed in the bed he'll stay in throughout his treatment. In the workroom, Carla reveals to Alice that she used to date Pat, which is why she behaves oddly around him. While Pat plays a board game with Blake and Angela, Blake stares somewhere absent-mindedly. It seems like his condition has started to affect him mentally. While doing research in another room, Alice falls asleep, whereas Carla is still awake. She hears wind coming from the bookshelf, so she wants to move it. To do it, she wakes Alice up, who helps her with the task. It reveals a ventilation shaft with a box inside. Carla takes it out. Inside, there is a journal along with some videotapes. The tape Carla holds has her father's name on it, William. They start watching it on TV there. William talks about how his research is going. He believes he is close to a cure. Suddenly, a priest shows up to say this is the devil's work. Robert is also there and questions William about the priest once he's in the patient room. William says he's an old friend whose name is Francis. When he comes back to them, he wears an uneasy expression due to his interaction with the patient Sarah. After whispering something to William, he audibly says it was like someone else was talking. Then the video ends. Carla wants to tell Robert about this, yet Alice wants them to watch all the videos first. She thinks there might be a reason why they remained hidden. At that point, they hear someone coming. This makes them hide the box. The one who arrives is Pat. He tells Carla she looks tired. The girl goes back to the patient room, where Angela's condition starts troubling her. While Carla tends to her, Blake starts ripping pages out of a book like he's possessed. Once Carla stops him, Angela sits up in a panic. His sister wants to know what he was doing, but Blake doesn't know. She sees that a Bible was the book he was doing that to. This seems to make her more uneasy. On the next day, Carla tells Pat that Blake is doing better, though he still doesn't get REM sleep. Pat is also there because he wants to talk to her. However, she does not want to. She tells him that the moment things got hard with Blake, he walked out on her. He apologizes for doing that. Carla does not want to be there, so she goes into another room to lie down. She may be trying to sleep, but she can't help to notice the faucet dripping and the fan spinning. She considers taking some pills, though something makes her reject them. Following that, Carla enters the patient room to see Blake's box on the floor. Picking it up, she hears someone say something. 
She wonders who made that sound. We see Angela looks fearfully at Blake. Then Carla watches the next tape with Alice. On it, Francis tells the doctors they have to stop doing their experiments. William emphasizes they are trying to save their patients, but Francis says that something is wrong with them. That goes beyond their sleep disease. When Sarah looks at him, she looks terrified. At that point, he talks seriously. He wants them to understand something like he does. He says Sarah may be possessed. Soon after, the lights turn off. Alice and Carla see a girl standing in the video. That is where it ends. Being shocked by it, they rewind it to see it again. Yet something very bizarre takes place. The girl is not in the video the second time. At that moment, a paranormal phenomenon presented itself completely. Interested to watch even more now. The next video has a patient going crazy. He yells that someone is inside the room. Sarah, however, just sits on her bed. Meanwhile, Angela looks fearfully at Blake again. Shortly after, the girls witness Sarah ripping pages out of a book, just like Blake did. Her face looks possessed as she does it. Carla stops the video to give shots to Blake. Once there, she seems nervous around him. Angela almost cries, so Carla comes to her. It does not take long for her to abruptly sit up to hold Carla. She tells her that Blake is whispering to someone. Due to this, she wants to be taken out. The only response Carla can give is that they will make them all better. Then she comes to Pat and explains what just happened. Although he was observing the whole time, he didn't see how Angela grabbed her. His advice to Carla is that she gets some rest. In another room, Alice looks at the journal she found in the box. It looks to have drawings of demons. Back in the observation room, Carla watches Blake whisper to himself. Suddenly, Angela slams on the glass, wanting to be let out. Soon her personality becomes stiff. She walks to stand on a chair, where she attempts to Carla instantly rushes in to hear Angela speak in a disturbing voice that this is a present for her. Right after, the next scene has Carla telling Robert what took place. The man decides to end what they are doing there. As they take Angela's body to the elevator, Robert can't seem to unlock it. They try to use the stairs, but they are completely ruined. At this point, the only option is to contact the hospital, which is what Robert does. After the call, he informs the crew that maintenance will arrive in the morning. The group is trapped in the sub-basement level of the hospital. There is no way for them to escape unless help arrives. Additionally, one of the patients has and unexplained events are unfolding. What exactly is going on in this facility? It is as if something is purposefully keeping them there. Afterward, Carla comes to Blake. He cries about what happened to Angela. This prompts her to remind him about the time they got some rabbits. When she was worried that one of them passed away, Blake told her the rabbit went to heaven. She mentions the ease with which he believed that. She, on the other hand, didn't trust God. She even started hating him once Blake got sick. Then out of nowhere, Blake grabs her to say he will end her life just like he did to her mother. Carla quickly escapes his hold before rushing out of the room. On the next day, Carla tells Pat she didn't imagine what happened in the patient room. She now believes something bad is going on here. Soon the conversation segues into her saying that Pat abandoned her. He tries to explain by saying she was very focused on curing Blake. It upset him to see that situation being more important to her than their relationship. He apologizes with tears in his eyes. Following that, they start watching another tape together. After seeing two unstable patients being interviewed, the third one is Sarah. She mentions the name Itamu that he is trying to get in. Since the doctor keeps calling her Sarah in a demonic voice, she asks why he calls her that. This causes the doctor to stop recording. The next video shows Sarah looking at them behind the glass. William gets Francis to come in. Upon all of them entering, the glass is covered in Bible pages and blood. When a demonic voice starts speaking, the video goes static. They still hear it, even though they think they shouldn't. Pat raises the volume, but the words are incomprehensible. Then Alice comes to tell them they urgently have to see something in the journal. In another room, she shows them who Itamu is. It's a demon that is stated to destroy all things. He enters people who stay awake for a long time. Once he consumes what he needs, he will be free, no longer requiring a human host. They need to perform an exorcism to stop it. But Pat, being the man devoted to medicine, doesn't believe it. Alice tries to remind him that the medications aren't working. They get into an argument about what they should do, causing Alice to leave. Carla tells him she has seen things she cannot explain. On top of that, she claims to know her brother. Her beliefs regarding the situation are crossing over to the other side. She probably already knows that Alice is right. Pat soon questions why certain things were not filmed on the tapes that were supposed to be on there. He then realizes there could still be a tape in the camera. So they look and discover that is the case. In it, William emotionally tells his children that he brought Sarah there to save her. In the workroom, she appears in her possessed form to chase them. Robert soon informs Francis that William lost his life. He attempts to take the camera, but Francis stops him. Before hiding the tapes, Francis makes the final important statement that Robert is responsible for the victim. When the bookshelf closes, they hear how the man loses his life. After that, Alice enters the patient room. Meanwhile, Carla and Pat come looking for her in her room. Much to their surprise, she jumps on Carla. It's good that she has Pat to help take her off. They see their friend is possessed. She speaks to them with a demonic voice before taking an active disconnected wire into her mouth. This eliminates the host in which the demon sits. Alice is now gone. 
Then we see Robert standing with a key around his neck, in a room with lit candles. In the meantime, Pat tries using the phone, but Carla notices it's disconnected. This causes Pat to lose control, and he says they have to leave. Yet Carla doesn't want to leave without Blake, so she takes Pat's head in her hands, telling him she needs him. Afterward, the couple enters the patient room where they find a lifeless Chris. Carla opens Blake's box to look at the crucifix. At last, she knows what needs to be done by putting it around her neck. As they walk slowly through the hallway in search of Blake, Carla spots him, standing at a distance. She looks at him and starts reading from the journal, attempting to perform an exorcism. At this point, we see she has abandoned her solid faith in medicine as the only cure. However, it doesn't seem to be working well because Blake walks toward the couple. Though once she says the demon's name, along with him being revealed, it affects him. Unfortunately, Robert appears, wanting to take the journal away. While Carla keeps reading, he starts fighting with Pat. The man proves himself to be truly evil by stabbing Pat. This prompts Carla to spill hydrochloric acid on his face. Then she escapes with Pat outside the room. As she tends to him, he starts losing consciousness, and possibly loses his life. Right after that, someone slams her from behind. Carla awakens in a room full of lit candles. Robert comes to her with a burnt face. He didn't end her life, because the demon needs to consume more to become stronger. Robert needed to collect as many of them there as possible. He tosses the journal near some candles, causing it to start burning. At that point, he explains his reason for doing this. He says he was tormented every day, but the demon saved him. We get a flashback of him being the boy from the start of the film. When he saw the possessed younger boy destroy the man who them all, it changed everything for Robert. We witnessed that boy because he did not want to be possessed again. Since Itamu gave Robert his freedom, he believes he owes him the same. He tried to let Itamu enter him, yet he never did. Meeting Sarah allowed him to reconnect with the demon. Once she hears that, Carla falls asleep. She dreams of being in the hallway, where she moves forward without walking. Blake is there, and she eventually touches him. At first, he looks kind and healthy, but soon his eyes change to give an evil look, making Carla move back. Blake disappears, to reappear in a more menacing form. This terrifies Carla to the point of waking up. While Robert recites his incantation, Carla uses a lighter to free herself of the restraints. She uses her freedom to run to the journal and puts out its flames. We see that Blake is now there. The demon within makes the boy bring However, Carla starts reading from the journal to prevent it. Robert opposes her readings with his own. It is uncertain whose statements have a stronger effect, though Itamu doesn't seem to like either of them, because he turns to Robert to say nothing controls him. After talking demonically to him, Robert is forced Itamu gave him his freedom long ago, and now he took it away on a whim. Then he starts coming for Carla. She starts talking to Blake on a personal level, telling him to not let the demon win. After fiercely yelling for her brother to fight, this makes white smoke exit Blake. That smoke is Itamu in ghostly form, disappearing into the floor. Carla comes to her wounded brother to tell him it's over. Three days later, they both occupy hospital beds. Blake seems to finally be sleeping, yet Carla lies awake. The way the view zooms in on her seems to suggest she is vulnerable to being possessed. Brother and sister are the only survivors, unless Itamu enters. No one there knows how to fight the demon. 